Um, so um, starting with studying for my PhD at uh, Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley, uh, one of the requirements, uh, I took a four week course in German. Um, and so we'll kind of get to that, that kind of set some things up. Um, and um, sometimes when you take a language, uh, they, especially in this kind of class, they uh, were also curious. So they would ask, you know, why are you studying this language? And part of your answer is just, it's a requirement. Uh, but also for me, um, that made me think, you know, well, I could use German to study Hildegard of Bingen. Um, yeah, I felt like uh, my German would never really be able to get very far advanced, uh, especially a four week class, but um, probably not anticipating uh, uh, significant further opportunities for more study of German. Um, and I felt like uh, uh, German scholars will write about Hildegard of Bingen, uh, but that would be typically easier, I think, than reading uh, people like Hegel, Heidegger, Rahner in German. Um, so anyway, um, that kind of got me uh, started. Um, and one of the things that happened in this program, so from that point on, uh, I wrote quite a few different papers on Hildegard of Bingen uh, uh, as a visual artist, as a Benedictine, um, and thought that I was going to write my dissertation on Hildegard of Bingen originally. Um, I won't get into details, but certain things uh, occurred leading me to choose another topic. Um, and actually kind of searching for another topic um, and uh, not getting into the various kind of dead ends that I hit. But um, I have been also interested in this artist. And uh, one of the uh, first kind of ways that I saw uh, the work of this artist was in our prayer books. Um, and so you will be familiar with uh, some of our prayer books and hymnals that will have uh, this image, uh, Christ of the Breadlines. A few other of his images we also have in some of our prayer books. Um, and so at some point I did a search and uh, I wasn't sure who the artist's name was. Uh, I just kind of put in a few words um, and uh, tried to see what would come up and found out uh, more about Fritz Eichenberg. Um, the artist of Christ of the Breadlines. Um, uh, here actually uh, also is his image of Saint Benedict. Uh, so Fritz Eichenberg, who did illustrations for the Catholic worker. Um, as far as information about Fritz Eichenberg, uh, I found that there was some information. Um, he did interviews with the Smithsonian uh, and actually, the text of these interviews are posted online, so that was very convenient. There's no book on Fritz Eichenberg. There's no published book, um, but if you want to find out about his life story, you can see uh, these interviews, so that was a good starting point. Um, from there, uh, I wanted to see what I could as far as more information about Fritz Eichenberg. Um, I made several visits to the Catholic worker Dorothy Day archives at Marquette University between 2014 and 2015. Um, at this time, I really still did not know where Fritz Eichenberg's archives were, and they actually did help me uh, at uh, Marquette. They helped me find where his archives were, just a matter of uh, searching on the internet, but using the right words. I was looking for the archives of Fritz Eichenberg, and they said, well, what if we search for the papers of Fritz Eichenberg? I hadn't really thought of that, but that was what led um, me to find out that his archives are at Yale, and I was able to make uh, visits there, um, uh, two visits uh, to his archives um, at the Arts of the Books collection. Um, so uh, Fritz Eichenberg, beyond his work as a um, for the Catholic worker is uh, a book illustrator. Um, this is what New Haven looks like in February. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, uh, there would be a picture of Dorothy Day's face there, other than covered by snow. 
Um, let's see. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I wrote this dissertation in 2016, a case study in the relationship between creativity and spirituality. Um, here is uh, the thesis. Uh, I'm just kind of putting this up there. Um, one of the things about this thesis is that I talk about his concept of the artist as a witness. He wrote this uh, pamphlet, Artist on the Witness Stand, um, here's just one um, uh, quote from that. Uh, Artists are witnesses of our time. They reflect the events swirling around them. So this is the, the thesis of my uh, dissertation. Uh, and then uh, my dissertation is a case study in the relationship between spirituality and creativity. So this is really where it gets into the concept uh, behind what I'm looking for in the life of Fritz Eichenberg. Um, uh, here's kind of an overview of the chapters. Uh, I won't really, um, uh, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of uh, ultimately uh, my sabbatical as a whole, and that's this presentation I was uh, thinking of maybe giving a presentation on the sabbatical as a whole um, and the trip to Austin, Texas is part of that, but um, uh, the purpose of my sabbatical really is to revise my dissertation into a book. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you might just say, well, why don't you just give a publisher your whole dissertation? Um, and I've discovered that I don't know if this is different from the past, but um, in today's world, publishers don't really just want to receive unedited dissertations, just um, uh, they want to actually see that the author has put some thought into how the dissertation would be received um, by a broader audience. Mm -hmm. um, and so definitely the way these chapters appear is I am writing a dissertation that I hope, uh, that I did hope and uh, would make the dissertation committee happy and really was not thinking anything about, you know, <laughs> would this be something that other people beyond my dissertation would be interested in reading? Uh, that really was not anything that I thought about. Um, so one thing, uh, I was in a faculty writing group in the spring of 2021, and that was very, very helpful for me uh, as far as um, coming to uh, uh, learn a little bit more about the, how to revise my dissertation. Uh, someone recommended a book to me uh, to, to read about that. 